Hello and welcome to Hockey Talkie. My name is Clay. Thank you for tuning in. I just want to make a quick little video here to discuss some of the news items that came out this week regarding the Blackhawks. Starting off, I want to talk about Chris Kunitz announcing his retirement from the NHL after 15 seasons. 39-year-old won four Stanley Cups during his career after going undrafted, believe it or not. And for a player like him who was never a superstar, he's a guy who's not going to go into the Hockey Hall of Fame. For a player who was never a guy that opposing coaches was like, we need to stop that guy, double him every time he goes into the paint. Like, he wasn't that type of guy. Uh, but he was a perfect role player. He was a player that coaches loved, a guy you could slot in up and down your lineup, first line, second line, third line, didn't matter. Put him in there. He's going to succeed. And, yeah, he's not a star player. He's not going to take over a game. But he played the type of game that helps you win Stanley Cups and – the Ducks and Penguins can kind of attest to that. Four Stanley Cups, nothing to balk at. Chris Kunitz having probably the best career you could ever hope for uh, for a guy in his shoes. Undrafted, 15 years, never a superstar, like just a great career. Not only that, but he had a great film and TV career starring in The Lord of the Rings and Lost. I mean, the guy could do it all. And now he's joining the Blackhawks coaching staff, going to be a player development coach, similar to Brian Campbell, going to work with our prospects and guys in Rockford. Brian Campbell, a defenseman. Chris Kunitz, a forward. But Chris Kunitz, a guy, like I said, wasn't a superstar, went undrafted, doesn't have elite talent, but had 15 years in the NHL. Like, there is knowledge in that brain to get the most out of a limited skill set and that could be some invaluable knowledge to some of our prospects. I'm excited for him to join our coaching staff in that regard. Now I did get the chance to meet Chris briefly at the Blackhawks convention last summer. Had a photo op with him, exchanged some words, not in a bad way though, like I didn't exchange any fighting words with him. He did play with grit, just you know not at the convention. But for a guy like him who had won four Stanley Cups already, uh, at the tail end of his career, he didn't have anything left to prove. He could have just mailed it in, just gone through the motions. But from my quick little exchange, like, he didn't seem like he was that kind of guy. He did it with a smile on his face. He seemed like a very genuine, down-to-earth guy. He seemed like he was just kind of taking in the experience and kind of enjoying it. I mean, we know the Blackhawks convention is like nothing else. Like, no other team does something like that. So for him, who had played 15 years in the league or 14 at that time, to experience something like that for the first time, I'm, I'm sure he was kind of enjoying it a little bit. But with all the praise that other players uh, have said about him and coaches and Coach Colleton, like I have no reason to suspect anything different. Although, if he was just going through the motions, I guess I can't really put it past him. He was a pretty darn good actor. So anyhow, Chris Kunitz retiring, joining the Blackhawks coaching staff once again. I'm excited for a guy like him, a high-class character guy with uh, a lot of knowledge about getting the most out of your talent level, uh, I'm excited to have a guy like that on our coaching staff, especially for our young prospects. That's going to be awesome. Speaking of the coaching staff, that segues me to the other topic I want to talk about today, and that is Marion Hosa, or at least John McDonough announcing or reiterating, I guess, that Marion Hosa would be joining the Blackhawks or working for the Blackhawks organization in the future. That's not really a surprise. We've kind of known about that for a while. The ideas floated out in space for many years now that Hosa would probably work for the Hawks in some sort of capacity after his contract expired, uh, whether it be an ambassador or coach or whatever. The idea was there that he'd probably work for the Hawks or the Hawks wanted him to work for him. So he has a contract, obviously, even though he's not playing, his contract doesn't end until 2021. So he wouldn't be working for the Hawks until that time or until after that time, unlike Chris Kunitz, who is joining the coaching staff right now. Now, a lot of people are not really happy about this, or at least this news even though it really shouldn't be big news because we, we've known about this, this timing of this news has kind of hit some people in the nerves and gotten some people uh, pissed off again because of the whole situation regarding his contract and his skin allergy and LTIR and convenience of salary cap and all that stuff. I'm not going to get into it because, quite frankly, whatever opinion you hold on that whole situation right now 
years after it had already developed, you still hold on to that idea. Whatever I say is not going to change your mind. So there's really no point in me going over that. Uh, I'm not going to change your mind. You complaining about it, if you are one of those people, uh, you're complaining about it will not change the reality that, you know, the situation is what it is. Like, it's not going to change. So that's really it. Like, it's news, but it's not news. Marion Hossa, a couple years from now, will be working with the Hawks in some sort of uh, fashion. Um, but yeah, those were the two things that kind of came out about the Hawks this week. So I just wanted to briefly touch on them. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments section below. Like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate that as always. But most importantly, stay safe, make good decisions, and I'll see you next time.